name is uh, Jeff Jacks. I do the online comic strip Questionable Content. It is uh, on the internet at questionablecontent.net. Uh, it is a kind of slice of life uh, comedy with romance and sci-fi elements and things like that. Uh, it updates five days a week, Monday through Friday. There's over 2,000 free comics in my archive at this point. So yeah. And it kind of started off as an indie rock music strip and then evolved. Can you tell us a little bit about that evolution? Yeah, uh, part of it was uh, just a natural like broadening of the focus, I think. I, I, I found myself more interested in just doing more broad general humor as opposed to doing very specific jokes about obscure Niche bands. target, yeah. yeah. Um, so part of it was a conscious decision to kind of make it a little bit more accessible and part of it was just me wanting to do that kind of humor. Um, and then I'll, some of it was my comics continuity as well because the pace of the strip is so much slower than in real life mm -hmm. that I, I, I would get to the point where I'd be, you know, having a character make a joke about the first Arcade Fire record in, say, 2004. And then in 2007, maybe they're talking about the second Arcade Fire record. But in comic time, it's only been six months. And so that didn't really make sense. And so yeah. I was like, OK, I'm going to kind of phase that out and maybe make it a little bit tighter. So lately, uh, Marigold and Hanlor, which are two of your characters, have kind of become more central, whereas before it was Martin, Faye, and Dora. Are there any other kind of secondary characters that you intend to bring up to the fore um, upcoming? I ask because I have a particular bias to Ty. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I have plans for Ty. I have, I, have grand, I have plans for everybody. The, the tricky part about my strip is that there are so many characters in the cast at this point that it can be difficult to balance you know, one or the other. And I always have a million different ideas for different people, so it can be tough to kind of fit them in. Um, but I do enjoy being able to jump around a lot like that and shift the focus from, from one person to another or one relationship yeah. to another. Um, Hanalore and Marigold have kind of taken over just because <laughs> I have the most fun with them at the moment. But it does change over time, and it's nice to get back to you know the the you know the original core cast or shift over to somebody else. So yeah, I I have lots of plans. It just takes time to get them all out there. So what are some of the endearing qualities that you attribute to Hanalore and Marigold right now? I think in Hanalore's case, I think a large part of her appeal is that you know every, everybody kind of identify. Everybody has some sort of neurosis. You mm -hmm. know, most of them are not nearly as severe as hers, but everybody's got some sort of mental thing that they struggle with. And I think you know when you see that in a, a character in a, in a comic book or any kind of media, you intend you like inherently like kind of root for them and you mm -hmm. want them to succeed. And so it's fun to watch her kind of try and cope with her problems and, and deal with them and, you know, sometimes fail and that can be funny or, or a little sad or whatever. Um, so she, she's just a very, I think, appealing character. Mm -hmm. As with Marigold, I, I feel like everybody either knows a Marigold <laughs> in real life or they are that, that character in themselves, you know, kind of nerdy, shut in, socially awkward. You know, it's a very common trope as far as personality goes. Yeah, to have kind of so, a tight yeah. comfort zone that's yeah. hard to And And break she's out of. really, really fun to write. So it, it, it's just, it's partially, you know, I think people identify with her and partially I just really, really enjoy doing strips with her in them. So, you know, even if people didn't like her, I'd probably just keep ramming her down their throats <laughs> because she's so fun to draw. And so. so questionable content has been running now for nine years yes. this upcoming August. Yep. And um, do you have any kind of other projects you are helming, or is this really kind of the love of uh, your life right now? This is definitely, like, this has always been the focus, and I, I see that remaining the focus of my career for the foreseeable future. Uh, I do have a bunch of side ideas for projects that I want to work on at some point, mm -hmm. and I've also got a few, like, kind of secret things that I'm working on right now. Uh, I, I'm working on a, a video game project right now with a, a bunch of other creators that I'm not not allowed to say much about <laughs> right now because it's in the very early stages, but uh, when we get the ball rolling public publicly on that, I think it'll be a pretty big deal. I'm really excited about it. I really like how you're kind of going over different mediums because even then you started, you also started um, a band, Death, uh, Death Mouse, right? Yes, yes. And yes. that was originally from the comic, but you were like, I really want to make some music. Yeah, it, it, it kind of started out as like, oh, I'm going to write some <laughs> like really stupid metal songs because it's fun to play, and, you know, and it's just four really four chords really <laughs> fast but then the more I started doing it just as a joke the more I realized like wow this is actually really fun and challenging and and so I started taking it more seriously and, and putting more effort into it and now it's become 
pretty much like my chief hobby outside of the comic. I spend a lot of time like writing and recording music, and it's really fun. It's really rewarding because that's what I that's what I went to school for. I have a degree in music, so it's always been like a big passion in my life, and it's really great to be able to do that and, and have a bit of an audience for it and have an outlet that I can that I can get it out there. And I saw somewhere that you said that, you know, if you could go back nine years, the one thing that you would add to your education is business lessons. Oh, God, yes. <laughs> uh, thank goodness that my wife is really good at handling the business aspect of the comic because I'm terrible at it. I, <laughs> I, I'm awful at scheduling and planning things in advance and all of that. Uh, so, yeah, and it's very hard. It's, it's like any other self-run business. You're the boss. You're the main employee. It, it all comes down to you. So uh, it, it's a very challenging aspect of the job. Um, and, and the more you know about that, the better off I think you are. A, a, a lot of that I've had to kind of learn on the fly, and that's, that can be difficult and risky. Um, I've been fortunate in that I've, I've learned how to kind of delegate things and get shit done. I but, know what you mean. Yeah. I mean, it's, there's a very small margin of error. Yeah, like exactly. if you mess up your taxes. Oh, bad news. <laughs> Whereas art, I feel you could do trial and error, yeah, so you'll exactly. write panels or yeah. strips and then you'll learn from, oh, yeah. that didn't work, this works a little bit yeah. well. And one of the great things about doing like a, a serialized sequential thing is that, you know, sometimes I have a bad day and, and I write a comic that I'm like, well, okay, maybe that's not the best one that I've ever done. But mm -hmm. Then I have the comfort of knowing that, oh, I get to try again tomorrow. Exactly. And tomorrow will be different. And so there's this constant sense of progress that I have that is really rewarding.